Hey there, welcome back to Hardcode. In this video, we're diving into an exciting project that merges technology with tradition. We're gonna develop a dynamic, interactive family tree that not only traces your lineage, but also brings your ancestors close to life. Let's unveil the magic behind creating a custom digital family tree that will serve as a window to your past and a legacy for the future. Stay tuned till the end to see how you can create yours. Share over you the project. Imagine a digital canvas where every branch tells a story, every leaf whispers a name, and every root traces back to the beginning of your lineage. Through the Balkan family tree, we bring this vision to life. We will start by showing you a fully realized digital family tree, illustrating the connections and the legacy of an entire lineage at a glance. This interactive masterpiece responds to your touch, revealing the stories of the generations past. So here, we are illustrating the family tree using the characters from the popular animated series, Family Guy. This approach helps to demonstrate how the data should be structured and gives a familiar reference for the visualization. I had deployed the app in the Netlify for demo. We'll take it down later. So just to give you a context here, Peter and Louis are wife and husband, Brian is a pet, Meg, Chris, and Shruvi are the children. So we can collapse their haze using this hat button. So here we can see that the tree selected orientation is bottom left. This is what we kept by default. So what I meant by orientation is like tree starts panning from the bottom left. So we can select the top, we can select bottom, right, left, top left. We already explored bo bottom left, so let's go to right top. So left top, yeah. So we have all this orientation of the trees. And then we also have the search functionality. Let's say we search for the Peter, we have this here. So here, while, uh, when we open the Peter, we get all the details regarding Peter. So currently we have name, image, gender, and designation. So if we want to download this as a PDF, we can do that. So here we're going to download Peter's profile as a PDF. And then on the top level, we can do it for the whole family tree. So here let's explore both of them. And this is how the Peter's PDF looks like. We have all the details regarding Peter, name, image, gender and designation. And this is the family tree PDF where we have all the family members here. So now that we've seen how to search by name, let's explore other available options. So here we can search by any field's value. Let's say we, uh, we take search for safety inspector and then it gets to Peter. So other available option is to filter by gender. So this is very useful when you wanna see like the gen gender ratio among all generations. So this is a glimpse of a family tree ready to create your own. Let's dive in. First things first, so setting up your environment. We'll walk you through the setup process, ensuring you have all the necessary tools and knowledge to begin. From configuring your environment to accessing the essential libraries, we're here to guide you every step of the way. So first is the Balkans Family Tree Library. The Balkan Family Tree Library is a powerful tool designed to bring your family history to life with ease. Built upon the cutting edge technology and inspired by the rich heritage of the Balkans, this library offers a seamless way to visualize your ancestry in a dynamic and interactive manner. Provides a user-friendly interface that allows you to create a stunning family trees with just a few lines of code. With its robust features and customizable options, it's a perfect solution for anyone looking to explore their roots and preserve their family's legacy for generations to come. So let's go to Balkan's website. So here we are at Balkan app website and we have family tree here. So here we have the demos and the docs here. So here we have creating custom templates and we have the API uses. And from here we can download the family tree library. This is the free version. So next thing is API key for your Google Sheets API. So to get your API key for the Google Sheets API, you'll need to follow some specific steps. If you're not sure how to do this, don't worry. I got you covered in my previous video where I walk you through the entire process step by step. Make sure to check it out to get, so that you can get your API key and get started on leveraging the power of Google Sheets in your applications. So I have provided the link for the video in the description. The so next thing is the Google Sheet. We need to create a Google Sheet and populate the data that will be acting as a source for your family tree. So here we have created a Google Sheet. 
So here we have different fields called IDs, PADs, names, gender, FID, MID, designation, and image. So the uses. So here ID is a mandatory property. PID is the partner IDs which represent the connection between the partners. If a person has multiple partners, we can separate them using the commas. MID is the mother ID, FID is the father ID. And we follow the small case for all field names. We should not change the name of the sheet where we define the data because if we change it, we won't be getting the data. And then we should not change the name of the field gender and, and the case of its value. Similarly, we should not change the fields, field names like ID, FID, MID and PIDs. So the family's information will be fetched from the sheet via API. This sheet is crucial for dynamically populating your family tree with the real and personalized data. Next is OEF code. Here we have the two main functions. First is fetching and organizing the data. Next is integrating the data into your web app. So purpose of each code segment. As we explore the code together, we'll pass to highlight the purpose between the each segment. From customizing the appearance with CSS to enhancing the interactivity with JavaScript, every piece has its place. We'll explain how the code brings each element of the family to life, ensuring you understand the magic behind the process. So here, we are the fetching.js. This part of the code deals with the fetching and organizing the data. So we fetch the uh, data from the Google Sheet using the Google Sheets API. For that, we define some few of the variables here. First is spreadsheet name, spreadsheet ID, and API key. So spreadsheet name is this part, and then spreadsheet ID is this part of the URL. So here, we call the API, and then we get the JSON data, and we just transform the data. So let's see what is the data we'll be getting in the API. So this would be getting a JSON response as like this, and then where the values is a two-dimensional array, and the first being the headers, and the next being the values of each row. So basically in fetch.js, we'll be forming a JSON array list where we have the key value pairs map. So we just sanitize the IDs and then uh, pass into the integer here. And then we resolve the promise with the transform data. If any ha error happens in this process, we just log the error and reject the promise with the error. So next is index.html. So here this uh, we define the title of the web page and this is for favicon. And this is the CSS, the styling sheet for us. And this is the bootstrap CSS and this is a jQuery and this is similarly the bootstrap JS and this is the family tree library which we just downloaded. And this is the fetching.js which we just looked into. And main.js is the heart of our web app. We'll look into that. So here we just display a couple of containers for data representation. The first one is for the displaying the total family members. And this section is for the drop down and this is for loading spinner. We load the spinner until we get the data from the API. So this is for rendering the family tree. So let's go to the main.js. So basically we execute the following code only once the window has started loading. So here we define the variables to hold the family data on the total family member count. So this is just a boilerplate code, which we get from the uh, Balkan site itself. I'll show you how to get that. So here we have the, uh, in the family tree JS, in the docs, we go to the creating custom template. And then we have all these uh, templates defined. We just pick an experiment which is like whatever is look good to us, then we just keep it. And then here we define a spinner before we fetch in the data and initialize the family data. So here we display the loading spinner before fetching and initializing the family data. So in this function, we're calling the fetch family data, which is defined in the fetching.js. And then we'll be call, we'll be just get initializing the family data with the data we get, and then total members with the family data total length. And then we just return the family members count. If any error happens, we just log the error and then we return null. So this function is to initialize the family data either from the local storage or by fetching the server. So why? Because uh, family data is not so dynamically changing for each hour. So we just store this uh, in the local cache so that like each time we refresh the page, we should not need to call the API. So I'm just retrieving it from the uh, local storage here. So we have the expiry time here. So if the data is present and like it is the expiry time is greater than the current time, then we can use the data. Else we'll just fetch the data using the API. So this function is called here. And then we, we just after fetching the data, we just set the expiration time that is current time plus one hour. And then we just set this in the cache and then we return the data. So next the function is to initialize the family tree itself. So here there is an inner function defined to create a family tree. So this takes the orientation as an augment. 
So wherein like we define this is just like defining a formality configuration. So we just in the export PDF, right? So the menu is defined here. So this is just the options we define this more scrolls and more like this is for X and Y scrolls. And this is the orientation of the tree. So this gets interesting here. We have the edit buttons and then we kept it as a null because like edit button can be only applied, uh, like makes sense only with the Balkans premium thing. So, but for the free version, they like this won't make sense because they won't apply the changes in our data, right? So we have, we have just kept it null, but don't worry, we have a way to get the uh, data added dynamically. Basically this edit form does the data adding part to the each node dynamically, but we'll be doing this using the Google Sheets. And here we kept the template as huge. And for the, this is the gender filter, which we saw there in the app. And then this is the node binding. We bind the field zero with the name and the image O with the image. And then we assign the family data to nodes here. We have defined a event listener for the collapse and expand actions for the nodes. So basically this is for this action. So the node should be collapsed and expanded on pressing the hot button, right? So this event listener is for the same. So this is the event, event listener for custom running of links between the nodes. So this is for this links. And then we return the family. This is about all this create community function. And then here we get the drop down element for selecting the orientation. So first we create the family tree with the initial orientation that is bottom left. And then we add an event listener. If any, like let, let's say the user selects anything from this, then we just destroy the current tree and form a new tree here. So here comes the main part where we call the functions we just defined. And then we just update the total members using the data we have. And then we hide the spinner since we have the data, right? We should be showing spinner until we get the data on. After that, we should be not be showing that. Rather, we should be showing the family tree itself. That's where we initialize the family tree. So I'll, I told you the local cache part, right? Let's inspect the page and then let's see how the cache is stored here. So here we can see that the value is stored as a cache here. We, once we clear this and we call this, so we can see the cursor, we can see the spinner loading there. So next is main.css. So here we are resetting the default margin, padding and the box sizing. And here we are defining the styling for the container of the family tree. And here the styling for the orientation drop down container. And this is the styling for the label in the orientation drop down container. So this is the styling for the loading spinner. So remember CSS is always subjective. I just defined it to be a simple and interactive. You can expand on this and make it more beautiful. So next is adding personal touches. So what makes your family tree truly yours are the personal touches. We'll explore how to customize the family trees, appearance, add special features. This part of the journey is all about creativity and personal expression. So here we can add different fields, whatever we want here. So let it be hobbies. Like we can define some hobbies like playing cricket. We just keep it common for all just for test purpose now to show you how to just add the fields. And this is some random thing just like that some random value. So we'll see that these values will be reflecting in the nodes we have there. So for that, we just need to clear the cache. So go to this application, the local stories, we clear the cache and let's refresh. So then, yeah, we have it here. So we have the hobbies here, playing cricket and this, we just added some random. So that this is just meant to say you that you can add literally anything here. So I just added some field called random and then gives some random value. It goes, just got displayed here. So this would be added to all the fields. So next is conclusion. As our coding adventure concludes, we have seen how the individual pieces come together to form a beautiful interactive family tree. But this is just the beginning. Now it's your turn to take what you have learned and create a digital legacy of your own. Try adding all your generations, your ancestors' stories avoid. Let's bring them to life together. All the code for this project is available on GitHub. We have included the link in the video description so you can download, explore, and even contribute to it. So, and remember the journey doesn't end here. Stay tuned for our next video where we will guide you through deploying this application on the net to fly, bringing your family tree to the world. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Hackcode. 
If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more coding tutorials and problem solving tips. If you have any questions for or suggestions for the future topics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, happy coding!